Yes, late movie will begin immediately following this special broadcast. At 25 minutes after 2 this afternoon, President Reagan emerged from the Washington Hilton. It was then that six shots rang out, shots fired at close range from a 22 caliber pistol. At least four of the bullets found a target, one of them the President of the United States. This is a CBS News special report. The shooting of the president. Here is CBS News correspondent Dan Rather. Good evening. Ronald Reagan, 40th president of the United States, today became the eighth chief executive officer of this country to be the target of an assassin. Mr. Reagan suffered a wound in his left chest from a single 22 caliber bullet. Where inches count, that bullet missed his heart by inches. The 70-year-old president underwent surgery at George Washington University Hospital to remove the bullet and repair damage to his left lung, which was pierced. A doctor at the hospital described Mr. Reagan as physiologically very young, said the president sailed through surgery and pronounced chances for complete recovery as excellent. Three other persons also were shot outside the Washington Hilton today. James Brady, the presidential news secretary, who is officially listed in critical condition tonight, and a Secret Service agent, also a Washington policeman. Both of them reported now to be in serious condition. Jim McManus is at George Washington University Hospital now. Jim, what is the latest report there? After two hours of surgery, the president is reported in good and stable condition. Doctors say he awakened in the recovery room in good spirits. They say he is an excellent physical specimen, that he was never in any real danger during the operation procedures, that the president, uh, as the uh, surgeons tracked a single mangled bullet that had entered his left side, struck a rib, and penetrated his left lung. Dr. Dennis O'Leary of George Washington University Hospital here said earlier the president was in some pain, but that he should be able to make decisions tomorrow, that he should be able to run the government from his hospital bed. Mrs. Reagan, who was returning from a luncheon earlier today in a Secret Service automobile, rushed to the hospital when she heard of the shooting, but did not know the president had been hit until she arrived here. She was with the president in the emergency room, stood outside the operating room during the surgery. She's reported doing fine and is back at the White House at this hour. Press Secretary Jim Brady, however, who was struck in the head by a single bullet, is reported now out of surgery in critical condition and doctors cannot predict the course of his recovery. They do say that his vital signs, his reflexes indicate that the brain stem is functioning and so Brady's doctors are somewhat more optimistic than they were just two hours ago. The next official medical briefing is at 8.30 tomorrow morning. But for now, we can say that the wounded President Reagan, who just about nine hours ago walked into that emergency room across the street, is recovering nicely, that he is reported in good and stable condition. Jim McManus, CBS News at George Washington University Hospital in Washington. Good news indeed, Jim McManus, and we'll be coming back to you a little later on in the broadcast. It was mid-afternoon. President Reagan had emerged from the Washington Hilton Hotel after delivering a speech he was waving to well-wishers, about to enter his bullet-resistant limousine. Lim Tucker was there when the shots rang out. With the usual aides and Secret Service agents preceding him, Ronald Reagan was leaving the Hilton Hotel. He just addressed a labor meeting, got a very good reception, and that may have added a bit of luster to his usual public smile. Near him, the three men who would in seconds be wounded. At Mr. Reagan's side, Secret Service agent Timothy McCarthy, 31 years old, from Chicago, married two children. A few feet away, just a yard or two in front of where I was standing, District of Columbia police officer Thomas Delahanty, 45 years old, a 17-year veteran of the force. And a few feet away, almost hidden from view, Press Secretary James Brady. Those were their places when this scene began. Get him out! 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 Get him out!
No one on the scene seemed to know that the president had been shot. Later, White House officials said even he did not realize it at first. The suspect, John Hinckley, had apparently been standing in the press area just to the right and behind where I was standing with other news people. There were many non-news people in the immediate area. Hinckley was instantly subdued, sped away as soon as a police car was brought up. Left there, the victims of this senseless afternoon drama. Press Secretary Brady, 40 years old, shot through the head. He came late to the Reagan inner circle, but gained the confidence of the president. His high good humor may have served him well in that regard, as it did with his adversaries in the press corps. Tonight, Brady is in critical condition after a six-hour operation. Officer Delahanty, who fell almost on top of Brady, was wounded in the neck and shoulder. He is listed in serious condition. And Agent McCarthy, wounded in the chest and liver, was operated on. His condition tonight is described as stable. Lem Tucker, CBS News, Washington. In custody tonight, charged with firing the shots at the president and those around him, is a young man named John Hinckley, Jr. He was driven tonight from an FBI field office to the District of Columbia courthouse in a heavily guarded motorcade for the formal arraignment on the charges. Fred Graham reports now on who John Hinckley, Jr. is. There is mounting evidence tonight that John Hinckley had stalked America's leaders before. Hinckley was arrested at the Nashville, Tennessee airport last October 9th when then-President Jimmy Carter was there for a speech. Airport police picked Hinckley up on the way out of Nashville when three handguns and 50 rounds of ammunition were discovered in his suitcase. Hinckley is said to have been in Nashville since October 7th and to have remarked that Ronald Reagan had canceled a scheduled appearance in Nashville for the 7th. Hinckley's ticket was to New York, where both Mr. Carter and Mr. Reagan were scheduled to appear at the Al Smith dinner on October 13th. He paid a fine in Nashville, and since he was never convicted of a crime, apparently his name was not entered in the FBI's computers or the Secret Service's list of persons considered dangerous to the president. Hinckley is next recorded as being in Dallas, where pawn shop records show that he bought two 22 caliber revolvers on October 13th. The FBI says he was arrested in Memphis within the past six months for what was described as a property crime. He was again fined and released. Hinckley's choice of a hotel in Washington suggested that he came here with President Reagan in mind. A J. Hinckley was registered here, one of the closest hotels to the White House, a little more than a block away. If convicted for attempting to assassinate the president, Hinckley could get up to life imprisonment and prosecutors say there are numerous other charges that could be added when an indictment is eventually issued. The Secret Service says there has been no evidence that anyone else was involved. Fred Graham, CBS News, Washington. His high school yearbook picture, a pleasant face, nothing there that said hostility or violence. John Warnick Hinckley, Jr., in his senior year, 1973, at Highland Park, Texas High School, member of the Student Government Club, Spanish and Rodeo Clubs. He would be generally thought of as an advantaged person, a resident of Highland Park, where many of the wealthy of the Dallas area live in fine homes. A junior high school acquaintance recalled he was a real nice guy, but moody sometimes. A senior high school classmate remembered John Hinckley, too. Just that he was a very quiet student. He wasn't, uh, you know, one of the noisemakers, I guess you'd call him. And from what I remember, he was his grades were always very good. In 1973, John Hinckley enrolled at Texas Tech University in Lubbock, Business Administration. He did not graduate. He was last enrolled here in the summer of 1980, Arts and Sciences. Rocky's Pawn Shop, 2018 Elm, the same street in Dallas on which President John Kennedy was assassinated. In this pawn shop, owner Rocky Goldstein says his records show on October 13, 1980, John Hinckley bought two guns like this one. The ATF and the FBI has been down here checking my records. And I've been getting some nut calls calling up. They're going to blow the place up. They're going to bomb the place. Maybe they're going to do me bodily harm. I don't know. It was in 1980 that Hinckley moved to Denver. David Dick, CBS News, Dallas. 
John Hinckley Jr. stayed off and on St. Abers at his parents' home in an affluent section of Evergreen, a town near Denver. His father, an oil and gas company executive, arrived home shortly after he heard the news today to be met by Secret Service and FBI agents who questioned the senior Hinckley and his wife at a neighbor's home. Later, family attorney Jim Robinson read a statement saying that the younger Hinckley had recently received psychiatric care, but the evaluation, said Robinson, did not indicate the seriousness of his problems. Other recent activities of the jobless college dropout are sketchy. It is known that on March 11th, he sold a guitar and typewriter at a Denver pawn shop for $50. He never reclaimed the items, but he left a strong impression on the shop clerk. He was kind of shaky about it, and he was really a strange-looking fellow, I would say. Definitely. How much total did he get for it? $50. Did he stick around long? Did he just sell it and get rid of it? or? Yeah, he sold it, got rid of it. You know, it was like he was desperate. And a few days ago, Hinckley checked out of a motel in the Denver suburb of Lakewood, a motel where it's believed he had stayed for two weeks. Hinckley's motel stay and his pawn shop visit are under investigation by the FBI. His parents, described as distraught, said in a statement they will stand by their son. Jerry Bowen, CBS News, Denver. As we have throughout the afternoon and evening, we emphasize again that there is a presumption of innocence on the part of young Mr. Hinckley. Uh, he has been charged with the crime, but uh, until and unless he is convicted of a crime, that presumption of innocence continues to prevail. Also, it may or may not be worth pointing out, uh, in answer to the question, did the police or the Secret Service fire their weapons at any time during the afternoon? And another question, do we know that all six shots came from the same weapon? The Secret Service tonight told CBS News, at this point, the answer is that we did not fire uh, any weapon. The Secret Service emphasized, however, that it will be conducting its own study of the entire incident, including all agencies' uh, response. This could take a few days, a week, or more. At this point, there is no indication of any wrong or bad news by the Secret Service. Indeed, every indication that the Secret Service agents on the scene uh, performed magnificently during the day. Now, that's the report uh, from Secret Service. From the District of Columbia Police, they say they have no knowledge of any District of Columbia Police officer firing at any time during the afternoon. They have no answer yet on whether the all six shots, and there is a presumption at the moment that there were six shots and six shots only, they have no answer as to whether all six shots originated from the same weapon. The investigation is continuing. In Plains, Georgia, aides of former President Carter confirmed that they are now making inquiries through the Secret Service as to whether John Hinckley may have been stalking Mr. Carter last fall. Mr. Carter expressed surprise at reports of Hinckley's arrest in Nashville. Well, there's no question but that it's been a long, hard day at the White House for all who work there. Correspondent Leslie Stahl now reports on their day and night under stress. At first, there was confusion. At 2.30, a White House advance man on the scene, and then minutes later, a spokesman here said the president was not shot, that he'd been whisked off safely. A half hour later at 3 o'clock, officials said that the president had bumped his head as he was pushed into his limousine. And it wasn't until 3.18, nearly one hour after the incident, that the White House finally confirmed that the president was hit by a single bullet in the chest on the left side. Asked why it had taken so long to confirm the injury, one aide said the president didn't know he'd been shot at first. A man who was there when Mr. Reagan arrived at the hospital said the president walked in on his own. They brought the press secretary in first, they rolled him by. And the president walked in holding his... Were people holding him on either arm? One, one, one guy was holding him on the side, and he was, and he was holding his arm. Uh, and his what did you side. see? I mean, was he bleeding badly? Well, I couldn't see that much blood because he still had on his jacket, and you could see a little spot of blood up on his... But he was walking? Yeah, he was walking. Mrs. Reagan was rushed to the hospital. Doctors told her the president's condition was good. Shortly after 4 p.m., a visibly shaken Secretary of State Alexander Haig came into the White House press right, briefing room and told State. reporters Secretary that, as of now, I am in control in the White House. We have uh, informed our friends abroad of the situation, the president's condition as we know it, stable, now undergoing surgery, and there are absolutely no alert measures that are necessary at this time or contemplate. Throughout the afternoon, aides went to great lengths to reassure the public that Mr. Reagan was alert with his sense of humor intact. As, as he was going down the hall on the gurney, I guess they call him, to surgery, he. He winked at Baker. 
He had earlier told uh, Senator Laxalt, who was there, uh, don't worry about me, I'll make it. He had told uh, Mrs. Reagan, uh, honey, I forgot to duck. I forgot to duck. And as they were wheeling him into surgery, he saw Meese and Baker and Deaver there, and he said, uh, who's minding the store? And then when he got into the operating room, he looked at the doctors and he said, please tell me you're Republicans. The president came out of surgery at 5.30, but it wasn't till 8.15 that Vice President Bush, who had flown back to Washington from Texas this afternoon, assured the nation that the president was okay. I am deeply heartened by Dr. O'Leary's report on the president's condition that he has emerged from this experience with flying colors and with the most optimistic prospects for a complete recovery. Late word tonight, Mrs. Reagan is back in the White House. She's described as fine and calm. There was one final dispatch, a press notice put out by the White House. It reads, and I quote, at 8.50 this evening, the president joked with his doctors in the recovery room. And despite the tubes in his mouth, he handed them a handwritten note which said, all in all, I'd rather be in Philadelphia. Leslie Stahl, CBS News, the White House. Well, it hasn't been a day in which uh, one has been able to smile very much, but certainly that note scribbled by the president uh, would bring a smile to anyone. The uh, Meese, Deaver, and Baker referred to by uh, White House aide Lynn Nofziger uh, inside that report by Leslie Stahl, of course, uh, refers to Ed Meese, Michael Deaver, and Jim Baker, who are uh, President Reagan's uh, three chief White House assistants. Uh, they were at the hospital as he was rolled in to the operating room. You'll recall that there was a row last week between Secretary of State Haig and the White House over who should head President Reagan's crisis management team. And in the first hours after the President was shot today, the Secretary of State was again at the center of some confusion. Bruce Morton reports. Thank you very, very much. The flap started because Vice President Bush was in Texas and Secretary of State Alexander Haig turned up at the White House temporarily in charge, but seeming to imply there was more to it than that. Constitutionally, gentlemen, you have the president, the vice president, and the secretary of state in that order. And should the president decide he wants to tr transfer the helm to the vice president, he, he will do so. Who makes that decision, Mr. As of now, I am can. in control here in the White House. That was wrong. At least it was wrong if Haig really meant a constitutional succession. That runs president, vice president, then speaker of the house. Deputy White House Press Secretary Larry Speaks suggested what was really involved was administrative control. But Speaks's list was also different from Haig's. There is, uh, for your information, an automatic uh, assumption of command authority that requires no steps be taken. It goes first on the vice president and second on the secretary of defense. What Speaks apparently meant was military control. The Secretary of State is, for whatever it's worth, the senior member of the cabinet. I don't know what arrangement he had with uh, Vice President Bush with respect to crisis management, which has been much in the news in the last uh, 72 hours. Um, I would think that uh, he could re very well regard himself as a um, uh, senior member of the cabinet. I think that uh, history is on his side. Uh, on the other hand, when Secretary of State Robert Lansing during Wilson's incapacitation in uh, the World War I era, called a cabinet meeting without informing the president. Uh, Wilson promptly fired him. Vice President Bush was back in the White House by evening, and the argument began to seem more and more abstract. I can reassure this nation and a watching world that the American government is functioning fully and effectively. White House staffer David Gergen may have come closest to explaining what really happened. People gathered here spontaneously. They came because of the situation we were in. And, and, the, and the vice president was in contact, and the, and the chief of staff, and Mr. Meese, and others were in complete contact. And we frankly didn't spend a great deal of time sorting through the statutory books and that sort of thing. So there it rests. In the real world, doctors say the president will be well enough tomorrow, probably, to make decisions. Vice President Bush seems certain to play an increased formal role while the president recovers. And Mr. Reagan's inner circle of advisors will obviously try to take some of the smaller issues off his hands in the meantime.
Bruce Morton, CBS News, Washington. There is a report tonight that John Hinckley, the suspect in today's shooting, may have been expelled from the Nazi-style National Socialist Party of America more than a year ago. United Press International quotes a party spokesman as saying, Hinckley was expelled because he, quote, wanted to shoot people and blow things up, end of quotation. That spokesman, according to UPI, also called Hinckley, again, quote, a nut, unquote. West European leaders, often at odds among themselves, are united tonight in their sentiments of dismay and best wishes for a speedy recovery. From London, Tom Fenton reports it is not only the leaders expressing those sentiments. Early morning editions of London newspapers ran banner headlines. Most of them gave the news without comment. But a London taxi driver expressed the thought that was in many people's minds here after hearing the news. Guns are very plentiful in America. Anybody can get a gun if they want one. That's the difference between here and London. Britain's Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher said she was shocked and sent a message to the president saying that she prayed his injuries were not serious. France's President Giscard d'Estaing sent his heartfelt wishes for the president's complete recovery. West Germany's Chancellor Helmut Schmidt expressed his deepest disgust and said he hoped for the president's earliest recovery. The expressions of concern that came from every capital in Western Europe were much more than routine messages of sympathy. The President of the United States is also the leader of the Western Alliance. In a time of international uncertainty, with the possibility of Russian intervention in Poland, the attempt on the President's life has added another element of uncertainty. The leaders of Western Europe, who welcomed President Reagan's election, and look forward to a period of more effective American leadership, have strong reasons to wish for the president's speedy recovery. Tom Fenton, CBS News, London. Congressman Morris Udall said today, it's as though we were watching an instant replay of an American nightmare. And Senator Edward Kennedy recalled, year after year in recent times, we have seen violence in this country. My brother John and my brother Robert Kennedy, Martin Luther King, Medgar Evers, George Wallace, Al Lowenstein, Vernon Jordan, the attacks on President Ford, and now the attack on President Reagan, end of quotation from Senator Kennedy. Phil Jones reports now on other reaction in the Capitol. On the Senate floor prior to today's attempted assassination, well-meaning senators opposed to the president's budget cuts were denouncing the Reagan administration for its alleged broken promises. But when Majority Leader Baker came onto the floor to announce that the president had been shot, no one was in the mood to do any more criticizing, and business was halted. Democrat Claiborne Pell described the atmosphere as being one of shock and horror. Senator Henry Jackson commented, again, our hopes are dashed that violence would not visit an American president. House Speaker Thomas O'Neill, who is second in the line of presidential succession, stayed secluded in his office today. He did receive a phone call from Secretary of State Haig, Haig telling the Speaker that key cabinet members had gathered at the White House. And security for all congressional leaders was beefed up shortly after the shooting. Although many of the Reagan political views are in some trouble on Capitol Hill, the president is personally popular. And so in political reality, these unfortunate events of today will probably help him in getting his program through. But in one area, the president's longtime opposition to handgun control, this will probably present problems. For it is sure to be ammunition for those in Congress who want such controls. As Senator Daniel Patrick Moynihan of New York put it today, how much shooting is going to have to happen before we get rid of those guns? Phil Jones, CBS News, Washington. It seems terrifying to a layman. A 70-year-old man is shot in the chest with a bullet that enters his lung. But doctors said President Reagan was at no time in any serious danger and faces an excellent prognosis for recovery. Richard Wagner explains why. The encouraging news that the president was out of surgery came from George Washington University Hospital spokesman, Dr. Dennis O'Leary. The president is in the recovery room. He is in stable uh, condition and he is awake. 
Uh, he was in no time in any serious danger. He was alert and awake with stable vital signs up until the time he underwent anesthesia. He was in the operating room for approximately two hours. Part of that time was spent uh, ascertaining that he did not have any blood in his abdominal cavity. Indeed, he did not. Dr. O'Leary described where the bullet struck the president as Mr. Reagan was about to enter his limousine. Traverse down approximately three inches, striking the top of the seventh rib laterally, and then going about three inches into the tissue of the lung itself. Is it lifted downward further from the seventh rib? No, it's like coming down, hitting the rib, and then deflecting in to take a new path. Dr. O'Leary used the phrase rock stable to categorize the president's vital signs during the entire operation, and he said Mr. Reagan should be able to continue uh, really to make not, the judgments you know, required judgment by his uh, office. For him. I, I think that I would urge him to uh, limit his physical activity within, within reason. Uh, there, there is no reason to believe that he has any impairment of his ability to make decisions or, or what have you. Uh, you know, making decisions is, is, is stressful business, but I think he's going to be fully up to it. Welcome news for an anxious nation. Richard Wagner, CBS News, New York. Let's go back now to George Washington University Hospital and Jim McManus for an update on the president's condition and the conditions of the others, including White House Press Secretary James Brady. Jim? It's clear from the medical reports here that President Reagan is not only a strong man, he is a lucky man. Doctors say that during surgery, the president's vital signs were rock solid, that he is physically younger than his years. And a lucky man because the bullet that entered his left chest missed his heart, missed every major blood vessel before burying itself in the lung tissue. They say the president is recovering nicely. And a slightly optimistic report now on Press Secretary Jim Brady. Doctors say his reflexes indicate that the brain stem is functioning. His wife reportedly entered the his room just a little while ago squeezed her husband's hand and Jim Brady squeezed back. The next official medical briefing at 8.30 tomorrow morning. The word here now is the president is in good and stable condition. Dan. Thank you, Jim McManus. Uh, of course, CBS News will be staffed at the hospital uh, throughout the uh, early morning and we'll have full reports on morning with Charles Corot tomorrow morning. Hearing the news at a club today, President Reagan's brother, Neil, said, I broke down and began to cry. I expected something like this to come. It's the way society is today. The president's younger daughter, actress Patty Davis, was reportedly shocked and praying for her father. His youngest son, Ronald Prescott Reagan, left a ballet tour in Lincoln, Nebraska to fly with his wife for Washington. And there was this reaction from the president's other children. He's a great man and he's been a great father. And I just hope uh, the people understand that we do care, even though we're independent. And we hope things like this stop. They stop happening in our country. It's unfortunate they do. But more than anything, I think you'll find out that the Reagan family are the first family. We love Ronald Reagan. We also love our country. We want to be there to wish him back to health. I am not prepared to accept this, whether it was my father or anybody else. I have seen um, throughout the day the reaction of other members of the family. Mine is fury and rage and anger. And that this, in this country, this kind of garbage still goes on. And it is not going to happen to this president. By God, it is not going to happen to this president. Really. And I think that the American people have got to become angry about the about the crime in this country, about the ability of people to do this to other human beings, and we have got to stop it, and we've got to stop it right now. What can the American people do? The American people can get angry, and they can, and they can start to propose policies and laws that, that have effect, that have teeth, that, uh, that can be enforced um, both through the courts and by law enforcement, and they'll do that. Gun when they control. get angry enough. Are you speaking of gun control? I have often said that perhaps it's not guns we should license, but ammunition. But something has to be done. The president's daughter. Been reports uh, by the president's doctors that he is in no danger uh, as we pass out of this day and into a new one. 
First there was Lincoln, and then Garfield, and McKinley, and Kennedy. All of them killed by assassins' bullets. And four presidents have been targets of assassins. Jackson, Truman, Ford, shot at twice, and today, Reagan. Theodore Roosevelt was shot at when he was campaigning for president. He was shot, as a matter of fact, while campaigning for president. Franklin Roosevelt was shot at when he was president-elect. These facts called from our nation's history are unpleasant, but unfortunately, they are worth pondering as this day closes. Worth pondering again. Dan Rather, CBS News, New York. Good night. This has been a CBS News special report. The shooting of the president. This is CBS. This is a CBS News special report. From Washington, here is CBS News correspondent Richard Roth. Good day. Shots have been fired at President Reagan. According to initial reports, the president was not injured. He has been returned to the White House. The shooting occurred outside the Hilton Hotel in downtown Washington, where the president had spent the past 30 minutes addressing an AFL-CIO meeting. As the president emerged from the hotel, there was the sound, according to uh, uh, witnesses on the scene, of pop, pop, pop. According to one account, five shots were fired. The president was immediately hustled into his limousine by Secret Service agents and sped away. Again, according to the initial reports, there has been no injury to President Reagan. However, according to reports from the scene, three people were wounded in the shooting. Repeating, shots were fired this afternoon at President Reagan as he emerged from a Washington hotel after addressing an AFL-CIO meeting. According to initial reports, the president was not injured. More details as they become available. This is Richard Roth, CBS News, Washington. This has been a CBS News special report. What did you expect? CBS News correspondent Richard Roth. Good day. As we reported a bit earlier, President Reagan, shots were fired at President Reagan this afternoon within the past 20, 25 minutes or so as he left a speaking engagement at a Washington hotel. By all accounts, the president was not hurt. We have received videotape from the uh, uh, hotel where the president was emerging. You are watching it for the first time as I am. There you saw what happened, the uh, crowd calling to the president as he emerged from the Washington Hilton Hotel. The sound of gunfire, according to some eyewitnesses there, there were three to five shots. And some people fell, but the president, as you saw, was immediately hustled into his limousine, which our camera does not show at the moment. It immediately sped away. We are told that some people in the area were injured, and that seems clear from these pictures which we have just received. But again, we are told that the president himself was not hurt. This uh, occurred within the past 30 minutes in downtown Washington. The president had been addressing a meeting of the AFL-CIO at a hotel in Washington. The shots were fired, as you saw, after the president emerged from the hotel and waved to the crowd, which was calling to him. Scene of considerable confusion and concern there. But once again, to repeat, by all accounts, the president was not injured. This has been a special report from CBS News. As soon as there are more details available to us, we'll make them available to you. I'm Richard Roth in Washington. This has been a CBS News special report. We should point out that that gentleman on the left side of the screen that you see with the small auto automatic weapon uh, is a member of the security detail and it has nothing to do with the assailant other than at this moment trying to uh, protect the assailant and the other officers. By the time this videotape was taken, President Reagan had been rushed away from the scene. What is happening here is the security men have the assailant uh, are holding him down and are administering to the wounded. Three persons uh, in the presidential uh, 
party wounded. Press Secretary Jim Brady and, as I say, believed the other two persons believed to be a policeman and a Secret Service officer. No identifications as yet. All of this happened a short while ago outside the Washington Hilton Hotel. By the time these scenes took place, the president was long gone and unscathed, except possibly for what was described by uh, White House spokesman Larry Speaks as a bump uh, when the president went to the sidewalk, down on the sidewalk immediately upon hearing the shots. I want to emphasize that we are in the early stages of reporting the story, and while it is believed that the three wounded persons are Jim Brady, the White House press secretary, that much uh, seems assured that the identities on the other two wounded persons uh, are tentative. One believed to be a Washington policeman, the other a Secret Service agent. This uh, Jim Brady, uh, who seems to have a head wound, uh, not seems to have, does have a head wound, but it's unclear from this videotape whether that head wound was suffered as he uh, hit the pavement or is from a gunshot wound. The condition of uh, White House Press Secretary Brady and the other two persons injured by the gunfire outside the Washington Hilton Hotel as an attack, an unsuccessful attack, was made on President Reagan, the president unhurt, the conditions of the three persons uh, who were injured by the gunfire unknown at this time. Yeah, we should point out that uh, one, it's Richard Roth again in Washington. Uh, Mike Deaver, the, uh, uh, Jed, you know better than I, the deputy chief of staff, I yes. believe, yeah. um, was uh, in that group that we saw emerging from the hotel. And at one point, it looked as if he might have been hurt in some way. Uh, we have received word now that, uh, uh, that he was not. Uh, He's right in the picture that we'll see in a little while, the slow motion repeat, you'll see Deaver right in front of Brady or right beside Brady. And uh, as the shots are fired, Brady leaves the frame, so to speak, is out of the picture, and uh, Deaver then disappears from the picture, but it looks as if he's not hurt. For those of you who may know Washington, this was, it was the side or so-called ballroom entrance to the Washington Hilton Hotel. There are two Hilton Hotels uh, in Washington. This is the one which is on, uh, well, Washingtonians would describe it as being on top of the hill on Connecticut Avenue, not the Hilton Hotel closest to the White House. The president had gone there to uh, make a, an address, and as he came out, uh, having made that address, he came out the side entrance of the Washington uh, Hilton Hotel. Small crowd had gathered there. You saw, those of you who saw the videotape, that remarkable videotape taken by uh, our CBS crewmen, Charlie Wilson and Norm Stein. Uh, the president waved a bit. Then at least three shots were fired, possibly as many as five from just to the right of the president. Uh, we're told that the shots were fired from just uh, off to his right at a range of uh, about uh, 10 feet. According to those at the scene, the shots were fired at a range of about 10 feet. That's uh, Mike Deaver in the uh, very front, now moving to the back of the car. And what a job that Secret Service man did by knocking the uh, president, as was the Secret Service man's job, knocking the president down and actually into the limousine, instead of, we thought initially, he'd been knocked to the pavement. The president, by this time, has been knocked into his limousine by that courageous Secret Service man, name unknown. Jim Brady, the White House press secretary, has been hit. You'll see him uh, just at the base of your screen. The assailant is being wrestled uh, against the wall to the right of your screen, although there's a man with a gun drawn to your right of your screen who is not the assailant. He's another uh, security man, and you could see yet another security man sort of held his wrist as if to say, don't fire a shot, everything's under control. The president has been driven away by this time. Three people are injured. Press Secretary Jim Brady and two others believed to be a policeman and a uh, Secret Service man. Let this replay of the videotape uh, play for a few moments here. You, the assailant pinned by policemen and security men at this point. No identification of who the assailant 
his, nor why uh, he would fire shots at the president. There's no indication that there was anyone else involved other than the single assailant, which is not to say that there could not have been someone else involved, but there's no indication that anyone other than the single assailant was involved. Weapon used is unknown, although those who were at the scene uh, seemed to be in agreement that uh, it was a handgun of some sort. The assailant uh, being held under a, a, a human body pile of officers and the scene secured by other officers who have their weapons drawn, including at least one small uh, automatic machine gun. Press Secretary Jim Brady face down on the cement with injuries the extent of which are not known at this time. And you can see uh, in the background at the top of your screen another of the injured men, believed to be a, a Secret Service man, that particular man, and then a Washington policeman is also described as having been hit. The seriousness of those injuries uh, not known at this time. President Reagan, uh, who was described as having uh, been jostled around and bumped a bit, was taken uh, to a hospital just to check him over, but I repeat, uh, the president was not hit by the gunfire, according to the White House. Uh, those of you who saw the early stages of that videotape may have seen the very quick reaction, the almost instant reaction of the Secret Service man who did his job, pushed the president down and it actually into the limousine to get him away from the shots that were fired just slightly to the president's right in a range of uh, what is described as about 10 feet. Uh, miraculously, the president was not hit. Unfortunately, three other people were hit. Uh, Judd DeVal and Richard Roth in Washington, uh, I know that you and our whole staff there have been on the telephones while uh, we've been watching a replay of the videotape and uh, talking here. Are there any other details uh, known whatsoever? And do we have anybody at the White House that we can talk to uh, right now? We're, uh, we're attempting to uh to uh, establish that right now, Dan. And uh, details here uh, from our position are, are just about as sketchy as they are where you are. Uh, we, uh, we don't know anything yet about the condition of uh, Jim Brady or any of the others who were wounded. Well, let me say, Richard, if I may interrupt, uh, that according to wire services reports just handed to me, and I emphasize that this is on the basis of wire service reports, that uh, Brady was apparently struck uh, in the head by a bullet. We had mentioned earlier that obviously he had a head wound, but it was unclear as to whether he was actually struck in the head. Uh, note with some interest that the wire service report says that Brady apparently was struck in the head. Sorry for the interruption. Go ahead. No, I, I, have, uh, I have very little to, uh, to add. Our, our Lem Tucker had reported from the scene earlier, uh, Dan, that um, the number of shots fired were between three and five, um, and uh, he said that uh, uh, that the people just dropped when the shots were fired, as, as you saw it, and we haven't yet heard back uh, what the condition of, of any of those wounded was. Well, the, the, uh, the other thing that, uh, that I do want to mention again is that uh, uh, the First Lady, Nancy Reagan, was not with the President at this, uh, at this speaking engagement. She was not with him when the, uh, when the shooting broke out. Well, what we have here this afternoon in terms of the President's safety is a, a miracle or something uh, near miracle. At that distance, uh, an estimated 10 feet, three shots fired, uh, the President not being hit uh, at that range, a very fortunate thing for him. Unfortunately, uh, Jim Brady, the White House press secretary, is described as having been just ever so slightly behind the President, walking, both of them walking toward the presidential limousine, uh, was struck. Apparently, Jim Brady was struck in the head. Uh, he has been taken to a hospital. Uh, reports on his condition unknown. But what a near thing this was outside the Washington Hilton. The president not hit, but at that range, uh, as I say, you have to classify it a miracle or something uh, close Dan? to a miracle. Dan, this is Jed. I think that you uh, can notice from the videotape that what may have saved the president from being hit is that was the presence of a number of people between him and the gunman, as the camera angle seems to show with the camera to the rear and to the, and to the curb side of the car, 
uh, and, the, and the bullets coming from that general direction along that wall, which I think you're familiar with, outside that entrance to the hotel, a number of people had come out of the hotel entrance with the president and were walking toward their cars. Very few people get in the car with the president. They go to the other cars that are behind him in the motorcade and heading for those cars. They were in the way. They formed a screen, apparently. Uh, this has just been handed to us. It's, uh, I am told from the uh, president's political counselor, Lynn Knopsicker, that the president was hit in the left side of the chest, but he is all right. Uh, Dan, I do not have uh, anything more on this other than, uh, as I say, to repeat, the president was hit, according to his political counselor, Lynn Knopsiger, who was his, uh, his uh, press spokesman during the campaign, you recall, hit in the left side of the chest, but he is all right. He is well. Well, he this is a change from a hospital. This is a change from, this is the scene at uh, George Washington Hospital in Washington, I believe, as the presidential uh, limousine arrived there. That's, that's Mrs. Reagan. And Mrs. Reagan, uh, obviously concerned being rushed into the hospital. Now, let us note that this is a change. What you've just heard in the last few seconds is a change uh, in the reporting. This, uh, that was the president on the stretcher, was it? No, no, the president was in a darker suit. That would look like one of the agents. And if this is live, uh, this is person arriving right now, and I think it is a live picture, and the president would have gotten to this hospital sometime before. But rightly, I know that everyone's concern is, uh, the, everyone's concern, and rightly so, is for the president's condition. Now, we said earlier uh, that the president uh, was reported to have been unscathed and unhurt. What you have had in the last uh, minute, in the last few seconds, is a change, and that Lynn Knopfsinger, who is the uh, presidential assistant at the White House, is quoted as saying that the president uh, was uh, struck, or at least uh, grazed, we don't know the extent of it, uh, uh, to the, in the area of the chest, but that the president is all right. Uh, now, this is a change from what we were told earlier, that the president might have suffered a, a lump or two. We'll simply have to wait uh, as time goes along for a full and complete physician's report on the president's condition. And while there is a change, the change now being that the president uh, may have been uh, struck, may have been grazed uh, in the area of the chest, uh, that the president is all right. That's the number one thing to emphasize, that while there has been a change, our first reports were, and very clearly were, that the president had not been struck by the assailant's bullets and had been unscathed. Uh, there is a report now uh, that he may have been uh, uh, wounded slightly by this shooting that occurred outside the Washington Hilton. This is frequently the case in the early stages of a story, and I know you can understand it, particularly when you have uh, an, an attempt uh, on the president's life, uh, that there are various reports. However, the reports of eyewitnesses at the scene were unanimous at the time. Uh, and as a matter of fact, the early reports from the White House indicated the president had not been struck. But I come back to the one point to be emphasized, and that is that the president is all right if indeed he uh, was struck at all by any of the gunshots, and Lynn Knopfsinger of the White House staff now says that Mr. Reagan was uh, struck to the extent that he has a slight wound in the area of his chest. If it turns out that the president was struck with one of the bullets, that it's nothing serious at all, that the president uh, is not in any danger. Now, as for the condition of uh, White House Press Secretary Jim Brady, one of three people who clearly were injured by the gun, uh, gunfire, uh, Mr. Brady is described by a television cameraman at the, at the scene as having been shot in the, in the forehead. This is videotape of the arrival uh, at George Washington Hospital of Nancy Reagan, Mrs. Reagan, the first lady uh, rushed in a side door in the uh, reddish-orange coat. This, uh, and is looking at it again, it clearly is not the president. That is the arrival of another of the, one of the three persons uh, struck, believed to be a uh, Secret Service agent. Jim Brady wounded, one Secret Service agent believed to be wounded, and one uh, Washington policeman Dan, believed I, to have been wounded. Yes. If I can interrupt, Richard Roth in Washington, a, uh, according to reports now, the president, uh, he's official now, the president was hit in the, t in the chest, during that shooting, he is reported in stable condition at George Washington University Hospital. Um, once again, we're now seeing the, uh, the, the picture as the uh, president waves to the crowd and uh, turns the, his left side exposed a little bit to where we uh, believe the gunshots came from. And that's when the, uh, the uh, shots rang out. We should point out, Jed, did you want to say something? That no, go ahead. We should point out that uh, Vice President Bush uh, was to be in Texas today. He had two speaking engagements in Texas, and uh, we were told, I don't have this confirmed now, but we were told just a moment ago that uh, he is uh, in his plane in the air, en route, presumably back to Washington. 
He also had a um, uh, speaking engagement uh, tomorrow in Chicago. I think it's safe to assume that uh, the vice president, though, will be staying in Washington, and that, uh, that speaking engagement tomorrow will be, uh, will be put off. Once again, I think that uh, we should repeat that reports are now that the president was hit in the chest during that gunfire, but he is in stable condition. Apparently his injury is not too serious. He is in stable condition at George Washington University Hospital. Uh, according to uh, Lynn Nofziger, uh, the president uh, remained conscious, and uh, it is uh, Lynn Nofziger, the uh, presidential uh, assistant, who describes his condition as stable. These are other tapes of George Washington University Hospital Center, which is uh, four or five blocks from the White House, and I guess a good 10 or 12 or more blocks from where the shootings took place. And these are arrivals at the hospital over the past 15 to 30 minutes. I don't know if this is tape. This, no, this is tape. But it's very important to emphasize that obviously arriving in that uh, ambulance, uh, this is after the president had arrived at George Washington University in his limousine. This is one of the uh, three other pol people believed to have been wounded uh, in yeah. the shooting. D Dan, we had thought, as we've been sitting here for the last 30 minutes, that the president rushed over to the hospital to see his press secretary, Jim Brady. And he did go there right away, but we've only realized in the last few minutes that he did with it, went there with his, a chest wound of his own. Gentlemen in Washington, if you could re-cue, if you could cue up again the videotape of the actual shooting, perhaps uh, uh, now that uh, some of the dust is beginning to settle from the reports, uh, we should have another look at that and go hey, through that uh, with an eye toward trying to see just exactly when the president was hit. Again, uh, for those of you who may have tuned in just a little late, uh, shortly after 2 o'clock this afternoon, President uh, Reagan coming out of the Washington Hilton Hotel uh, in Washington, uh, an unidentified assailant, a, uh, described as a blonde young male, uh, fired at least three shots, possibly as many as five, out of the crowd. Although the uh, indications from the White House uh, and from security men early on was that the president had not been hit, we're now told by the White House that President Reagan uh, did suffer a wound in the chest, but that he is in stable condition. Three other people, including the White House Press Secretary Jim Brady, were struck uh, by bullets, their conditions unknown. This is the president walking out. The shots will come from right behind the camera, Dan. Watch closely now. Mr. President. The Secret Service man knocks the president in, into the limousine. A security man pulls his weapon. Another security man cautions him not to fire. The assailant is on the ground on the right. Police and security men swarm over him to hold him down. An officer with his weapon upraised in his right arm. His right arm upraised, the weapon up high. The presidential limousine sped away and went immediately to George Washington Hospital. Jim Brady, the White House press, press secretary here in the middle of your screen, face down on the cement. In the background, either a Secret Service man or another Washington policeman, we believe, certainly one of the other wounded. A third person was wounded by the uh, gunfire. From all appearances, uh, Jim Brady, uh, the most seriously wounded uh, of those three, but we emphasize that we are going on the basis of early reports. We never in this videotape uh, get a, a really good look at the assailant, a security man with the uh, short automatic weapon in his right arm. You see a blonde head in there right now, Dan. That's all you get to see is a head. We should emphasize this is the man who is described as the assailant. We do not know in fact that he is. We're getting some more detail now, uh, Dan, on the president's wounds. Reported conscious, he's in stable condition, wounded in the left side of the chest. There is every indication that the president's wounds are not s serious. I should say that his wound, he has one wound. We have some, uh, we're told that the presidential limousine was hit by some of the bullets. 
This is videotape uh, of the presidential limousine, and you can yeah. clearly see the uh, bullet holes uh, in the door. And and they're on the uh, on the window as well. And one on the window as well. This is on the right rear side of the presidential limousine. You can see from the early stages of that videotape how that uh, courageous Secret Service man fell on top of President Reagan and pushed him right into the limousine. What we didn't know when we saw that videotape the first time was that the limousine itself uh, had been struck by at least two bullets. We can see two uh, uh, Dan, indentations Dan, you, of Dan, bullets. Then you can also see in that videotape uh, another Secret Service agent charging right at our camera and, uh, but not at the camera, at the gunman. And you can see him react as he apparently is hit in the torso, uh, right after the president, or as the president is being pushed by the other agent into the car. Judge DeVal, I wonder if, uh, if there's a way to slow down that videotape in Washington. It was unclear to me at what point the president would have been hit there. We don't want to overdo this. At the same time, uh, I think it might be uh, of some benefit to uh, take a look at just the early stages of that videotape to see if we can see exactly um, when the president was hit. There was a point as we watched it this last time, when I believe that you could see the uh, president wince, uh, and it indicated to me that it probably was the time at which he was hit. If we can get that uh, put together, yes. we'll come back to you it in a few moments. In the meantime, we want to go to the White House and our White House correspondent, Bill Plant. Bill, we understand that the, the president uh, has been injured slightly uh, with one wound in the area of the chest, but his condition is described as stable. Anything else you can tell us, please? Dan, that's exactly what we've heard here. The original report, of course, as you've said, was that the president was not hit. That came only moments after we learned of the shooting from our people on the scene. I went back to what's known as the upper press office here, the area in the, in the west wing where Jim Brady's office is. There was incredible concern, as you can easily believe. We learned then that three people had been hit, the Secret Service man, the Washington policeman, and Press Secretary Jim Brady. We were told then that the president had not been hit, apparently on the basis of the fact that people saw him being pushed into the car. Now the White House is saying, as you know, that he was hit, and that is the same report that we have, that it was in the left side of the chest and that his condition is stable. We know that Mrs. Reagan has left the White House for George Washington University Hospital. She is, of course, there by now and presumably with the president, who we are told is conscious and in stable condition. We have no further word on the conditions of the other three men who were hit, the Secret Service man, the policeman, and Press Secretary James Brady. And as you have seen in the videotape, uh, the assailant was, uh, or the alleged assailant, captured uh, by, uh, by policemen on the scene and, and taken away, as now we understand, in Secret Service custody. Beyond that, Dan, we can only tell you that, uh, as you yourself know, the situation at the White House at a time like this is one of intense concern, uh, uh, waiting, and on the part of some of the people who were close to those who were hit, tears. Bill Plan, if you'll stay exactly where you are at the White House, we'll have more in a moment, but in the meantime, we want to pause so that our stations along the line can identify themselves. Dan? Good afternoon again. Dan Rather, CBS News in Washington, in, uh, in New York, I should say. In our Washington studios are our correspondents Richard Roth, Judd DeVal, and uh, at the White House, Bill, Bill Plant. Also in our Washington studios, just joining us, Lim Tucker, our uh, CBS News correspondent, who was an eyewitness uh, to the shooting. Lim, uh, if you can pull yourself together there for uh, just a moment. I know it's been a run for you to the studio. Questions? Uh, I, I don't have the Dan, uh, Dan, it's Richard Roth, and let me pass on to uh, him, uh, to Lem, your, uh, your questions while we uh, get him in a position to be able to hear you. He can't just yet. Well, I think probably the easiest thing to do, Richard, is uh, for you to do the interview then with Lim uh, right there. I am interested to know whether Lim, uh, at the scene, saw the president struck by the gunfire. Dan, I, I, I want to back off just a little to say saw the president hit is more than anyone to my recollection saw there. Uh, later eyewitnesses may emerge. What we saw was the president come out of the side entrance to the main ballroom, uh, perhaps a distance of about 30 feet to his limousine. He started walking there, the smile on his face, I have since that incident, I was fairly certain, since the incident, I've heard a tape recording of the scene at the time. Someone hollers, Mr. President. The president starts sort of in this position, waving, smiling. 
and then the shots ring out. And let me interrupt you for just a moment, Lamb and Dan, if I may. According to the, uh, the latest information we have now, the president did walk into the hospital after the shooting. Lynn Nosiger said that the president apparently didn't immediately uh, realize that he had been wounded, but that a bullet is still lodged in his chest. Nofziger has uh, reportedly said that, uh, that the uh, president is not at this time in, in forget surgery forget, forget or headed it. for surgery. This, this is uh, the interesting thing because it appeared that, uh, let me say this, the shots rang out to my right. There was a brick wall right to the right. The press kept behind a velvet rope. But also mixed into this crowd, a uh, situation that is not... Uh, too uncommon, a number of bystanders, people from the convention, just people off the streets. The shots rang out. Naturally, everyone, well, some people first hollered firecrackers. And as we sort of moved back and started looking, I looked up, and the president, at this point, you could see Secret Service agents more or less almost grabbing him, appearing to, pushing him into the car. At that point, it was the belief that he was not wounded. In talking to several White House people immediately after the car pulled off, they said, no, he was not wounded. Lem, we we're going to uh, look at the videotape again, and you were there, and you can, you can perhaps now tell us what, what you saw. At this, at this point, yeah, there is the wave. Those shots are coming just over now behind that person, and you can see the panic. The, the spot now where they have this man down is where I was standing along with a number of other press people, but I was almost in that exact spot at the time these shots rang out. They seem to come from almost over your head then. Almost behind. over my head or to my side. As a matter of fact, as I ducked down to move back, I was quite aware that this noise had come from my right. And so I ducked down and moved toward my left while trying to see what was at my right. By that point, the efficient police had a man down. You can see them in the upper right-hand corner. Not now, this is one of the wounded. I have been at that scene and traveling here. I'm not sure if, Richard, you have identifications on the others yet? We are, uh, we are told that uh, one was a District of Columbia policeman and that another was a uh, Secret Service agent. We do not have that uh, confirmed. I think the uh, last uh, report from uh, Bill Plant uh, at the White House, though, was that uh, it was a uh, Secret Service agent and a District of Columbia policeman who were also wounded. Well, there clearly it's a, it's a policeman. See his, uh, his uniform. Pardon me, Richard Roth and uh, Lim Tucker. We're now told that uh, Secret Service agent Tim McCarthy was the agent hit by gunfire. We do not uh, know his condition at the present time, and we do not have uh, the name of the Washington policeman who reportedly was hit. But, Dan, we do now have the name of the uh, man who was arrested, presumably will be charged, the name of the suspect now, uh, John W. Hinckley, Jr. John W. Hinckley, Jr. of Evergreen, Colorado, we are told, is the name of the uh, suspect, and we are also told that he's 22 years old. He was described by those who got a better look at him than I did there as being uh, late 30s, possibly 40s. Maybe he... At this point, I might add, Dan, while this scene is going on, it has become very obvious to a number of people at that convention what has happened. People who came out to wave goodbye to the president and they are starting to become uh, quite tearful and upset as the police move through trying to control this crowd. And we have some more information. This now from the uh, public affairs spokesman of the Secret Service, Jack Warner. The name of the agent who was hurt is Timothy J. McCarthy. He is also at George Washington University Hospital, which we saw just a few moments ago. His, ch his wound is in the chest. He is being operated on now, we're told. He is... Uh, 31 years old from Chicago, and he joined the Secret Service in Chicago. Uh, and once again, the, uh, the name of the, uh, the suspect, uh, John W. Hinckley, Jr., of Evergreen, Colorado, the weapon, presumably the weapon that he was carrying, uh, is a 38, we are told, a 38 caliber uh, pistol, I guess that is. And for those of you uh, who have not seen this before, this is videotape of the scene after the president left the scene. This is Press Secretary Jim Brady at the crime scene, on the pavement, 
Brady reportedly uh, was struck uh, in the head. That is not confirmed. Uh, Brady's condition uh, is not known, nor is the condition of Secret Service agent Tim McCarthy, who was also hit, nor is the condition of the Washington policeman reportedly hit. We are told, however, uh, uh, by White House aide Lim Nofsinger, that while President uh, Reagan uh, was uh, grazed in the less left chest, that uh, the president himself didn't realize he had been hit until uh, at or about the time he got to the hospital. That accounts for those early reports saying that the president was unscathed and while he might have been uh, jostled up a bit and had a bump uh, from being pushed uh, through the heroic efforts of Secret Service agent uh, Jerry Parr, the early reports were that the president had not been struck. Then we were told that the president had indeed been hit, just a slight wound in his chest. Lem Nofsinger is uh, quoted as saying that uh, the president walked into the hospital, didn't really realize that he had been struck uh, until at or about the time he got to the hospital. Uh, the president, uh, we are assured, has not undergone surgery. Lem Nofsinger is quoted as saying he has not undergone surgery at this time. The policeman, whose identity we do not know, the policeman is now reported to be in critical condition. So if we may, gentlemen, let's pause for one moment and talk about what we know and what we do not know. Uh, President Reagan was the target uh, of an assassination attempt outside the Washington Hilton Hotel as the president emerged from making a, a speech inside the hotel. Uh, the president was pushed into his limousine uh, uh, by a bona fide hero, uh, Jerry Parr, of the Secret Service who put himself between the president and the gunman and pushed the president into the limousine. The limousine uh, itself was struck by at least two bullets, uh, one on, uh, in the area of the right door of the limousine, the other the limousine window. Three persons were injured, uh, White House Press Secretary Jim Brady, uh, a Secret Service man identified as uh, Tim McCarthy, and a Washington policeman. Brady's condition uh, not known at this time, However, uh, it is believed that Brady was uh, struck in the head. Uh, Tim McCarthy, the Secret Service man, his condition not known, but the Washington policeman's condition is described as critical. President Reagan is said to have walked into the hospital under his own power, didn't realize that he had been uh, struck, even grazed in the chest, uh, until uh, at or about the time he got to the hospital. The president is reported to be in stable condition, in good condition. Uh, the very best information available is that the president's wound is a slight wound, but I emphasize to you that we're in the early stages of reporting this, and uh, while we've had no physician yet speak for the record on the president's condition, that Lynn Nofsinger, the uh, White House aide, uh, says that uh, President Reagan has a slight wound in the area of the chest. The person uh, arrested as a suspect in the shooting has been identified as 22-year-old John Hinckley, Jr. of Evergreen, Colorado. Uh, nothing else is known about him. The number of shots fired, uh, at least three, possibly as many as five. Uh, the weapon, uh, not known at this time, but believed to have been a handgun. Dan, it's, uh, now, it's yes, Richard, Richard Roth in Washington, if I can interrupt for a moment. Lem Tucker just uh, had in me a note saying six shots. That's what he but had we, heard. Uh, and, and now the, uh, we're, we're also told by the Secret Service that uh, they too believe that uh, six shots were fired. We do know a few things more. Uh, that the, uh, the weapon apparently used was a 38 caliber revolver, that the suspect taken into custody is a white male, 5 foot 10 inches tall and uh, 22 years old. Uh, Lem, when after the, or as soon as the shots broke out, did you hear anyone say anything? Did you hear anything that might have been uh, anything from the crowd behind you? No, there, uh, I did not hear anyway the sort of thing you expect maybe somebody who does that sort of thing might holler out um, but nothing was said the shots rang out in reflection uh, several of us were talking in a few minutes before uh, I left the scene we, we could even remember what appeared what made some people first think it might be firecrackers is you could see this white flash sort of in the area of the sidewalk could see some of the Secret Service agents looking down uh, at the sidewalk and someone first thought they were firecrackers. We heard a tape. I thought earlier there were at least five to six shots. Since then we've heard a tape that a radio reporter had running at the time and very clearly you hear someone say Mr. President and then you can count six shots. The uh, FBI also we're told has uh, taken over the investigation which uh, would be uh, uh, procedurally correct, one supposes, in something like this. Uh, uh, 
they will will thus be in charge of uh, uh, presumably of what information uh, we get from here on in. One of the things I might point out that um, I, I don't I'm never been at a scene quite like that before, but one of the things that certainly seemed uh, uh, eerie was that as these shots rang out, first the, the someone hollered actually firecracker, someone very near me, and then there was that, I don't want to be over dramatic about this, but there was really, it seemed to be that suspension of time for uh, ever so brief second. That may have been the period during which a colleague of mine later uh, described the president as the smile leaving his face and he was just sort of stunned. Uh, I suspect, I remember looking up and seeing the tail end of that look on his face. Pardon me one second, uh, Lem Tucker and Richard Roth, forgive me if you will, uh, live television being what it is. We want to go directly to the White House and our CBS News White House correspondent, Bill Plant. Bill? <clears throat> Mrs. Reagan is currently with the president at the hospital. This is obviously a White House spokesman briefing for your uh, background, those in the White House press room. We anticipate that press statements, additional press from the hospital site. This is Dave. I'd like to add Jurgen. Two notes. We have been informed by Jim Baker that the president walked into the hospital. I would like also like to inform you that in the building as of the moment are the Secretary of State, the Secretary of the Treasury, Secretary of Defense, and the Attorney General, as well as other assistants to the President. Again. No, in this building. I'm sorry we do not. We, are, we would like to get that for you as, as rapidly as possible. Will the Vice President act as President under these conditions? No. It, uh, as the, the, uh, because of the delicacy, delicacy of the situation, I just, we wanted to inform you that the Vice President is on his way back to Washington. I would emphasize once again that the, the President's condition is stable and that we were informed by Jim, uh, Jim Baker that he did walk into the hospital. Is he still conscious? I'm sorry, we, we simply don't have enough information that is hard at this moment. Dave, is he you. conscious, Dave? Is he I, conscious? I, I'm sorry, I, I, I do not know the, the information on that, so I'm really not able to respond. We, let, me, let me say this. No let me just emphasize this. For your background, the, the folks at the hospital are obviously closer to this situation on a moment-to-moment -moment basis than we are here. We are obviously in very close communication with them, and we will try to keep you informed here, but that the primary statements we expect will be coming from the hospital, because we feel that they are closer to the facts. Who is there, David? Well, as, as of the moment, in addition to Mrs. Reagan, as I've informed you, and others, Mike Deaver, and as you know, and Dave Fisher were with the President uh, at the time. Uh, four people went up together, uh, Ed Meese, Jim Baker, and uh, Larry Speaks and Lynn Nofziger went together to the hospital. Oh, I'm not sure of the time. I'm frankly, I've, the time on these events has, has run together somewhat. But we will try to keep you posted here as, as well as we can. I think you all understand the, the delicacy of the situation. I simply don't want to report facts that we're uncertain of as, as of the moment. I really, I really, this is really to uh, confirm what has been said from the hospital already. How serious a wound is it? David, how serious is the wound? I cannot answer either of those questions. We will, as soon as we get additional information, we will obviously try to help you. Uh, I think if you will uh, be patient as a situation demands, we will try to get as much information for you as possible. Dave, is the president so, under any summation? I, I cannot answer that. I, I, I really would like, we basically we wanted to let you know where we were as of the moment. We will try to let you have uh, further information as we can. Thank you very much. When will the Vice President arrive? This is Dave Gergen at the, uh, at the White House. What you have just seen live from the White House was Dave Gergen uh, briefing reporters there, including our own CBS correspondent Bill Plant, and we'll be back with Bill Plant in just a moment. But first we want to go to a videotape of White House aide Lynn Nofsinger at George Washington Hospital, where President Reagan has been taken. We have this information. The president was shot once in the left chest. The bullet entered from the left side. He is conscious. He is in stable condition. And that literally is all I can tell you at this time. The president? The president. Was anybody else shot? 
Off the wires, I understand three people were shot, including Jim Brady, the press secretary. I do not know how serious that wound is. I have no information on 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 the state of uh, the condition of the other persons who were shot. Are they here? Yes, they are all here. Was the president's heart endangered by the shot? No. Is the bullet still in his body? Yes. No, I didn't say that. We have to answer one question at a time. At this moment, he is not he is, he is not undergoing surgery. I don't know whether he will. Is he conscious? Is he conscious? What? Is he conscious? Yes, he is conscious. As far as I know, the bullet is, is in him. Any secret service one in I can't I can't answer those questions because I wasn't there. But there were apparently three persons shot. And all I know on that is what I heard, what I got off the wire. Is that in the president and three others? I can't, I can't answer that. I was not there. Is that three in addition to the president? What? Three in addition to the president? Yes. Did hey, he Who was the assailant? I do not know. Was Jim Brady there? Yes. How was the president when he went into the hospital? What was his condition then? Was he talking to people? Yes. Uh, did, did he seem seriously injured? Was, was he... I, Obviously, a, a wound in the chest is a serious wound. Did he walk in? Yes. That is all the information I've got. We will come out. We will try to keep you informed as we progress. We will try. We will try to set up a press room here. We will have. We will have a a, a press person on hand here. We will keep you informed. Frankly, I just don't know a hell of a lot right now. Hey, why were these? What? Certainly, certainly. No. Why, did they, no. why did the initial report say that the president did not have been Well, because the president didn't, apparently, did not know that he had been shot at that time. Did not know? They did apprehend the source of the shooting. I cannot answer that. My, all I know is what I heard on the wires, which is that he had. Okay, we'll get back to you later. Thank you. Thank you. Lynn Knopfsinger, that was on videotape just a few minutes ago. Lynn Knopfsinger, a White House uh, press aide at George Washington Hospital, should emphasize that the thrust of what Mr. Knopfsinger is saying is that the president, while he does have a wound in his chest, uh, he is uh, uh, talking, uh, he is awake and alert. Uh, as Lynn Knopfsinger said, anytime you have a wound in the chest area, and this is quoting Mr. Knopfsinger, you have to consider it serious. But the president walked into the hospital under his own power uh, and has been conscious uh, straight the way through. For those of you who are asking, well, why weren't we told in the beginning that the president had indeed been shot? Uh, the answer apparently is that a uh, White House aide at the scene, Karna Small, uh, Karna Small at any rate had said that it was her understanding, this was a White House press spokesman, the president had not been hit. Eyewitnesses at the scene said they did not believe the president had been hit. You just heard Mr. Knopfsinger say that his only explanation was that the president himself didn't realize that he had been struck and, until later about the time he got to the hospital. All of that can be sorted out later. The situation at the moment, President Reagan is at George Washington Hospital. Uh, from all indications, from all reports, including what you've just seen from Mr. Knopfsinger, he is all right. Uh, a Washington policeman who has not yet been identified is listed as being in critical condition. Secret Service agent identified as Tim McCarthy, who was also struck, his condition unknown. White House Press Secretary Jim Brady is, has also been taken to the hospital with a head wound. Jim Brady's condition said to be unknown. Uh, at the White House now is our White House correspondent, uh, Bill Plant. And Bill, I want to ask you that UPI has just moved a story quoting an unnamed White House aide as saying in regards to Press Secretary Brady, quote, it doesn't look good. Now, do you know anything about that? Dan? We don't. We haven't heard anything at all about Brady's condition. And I haven't been back to, uh, to hear. I, we hope that that is not the case. One thing, Dan, that we should emphasize that uh, we may have missed when we heard Staff Director David Gergen out here a moment ago, we were told that a decision is now being made on whether to operate on the president to remove the bullet from his left side. So it's plain that the bullet is lodged in the president's body. A decision is now being made, we're told, on whether to operate. Uh, Gergen also told us that Vice President uh, Bush is on his way back to the city and that the Secretaries of State, Treasury, Defense, and the Attorney General are here in the White House. This was the beginning of David Gergen's statement a few moments ago in the White House briefing room. Uh, Bill, that comes as news that they're now uh, making a decision. So let's hear what Mr. Gergen has to say. statements made at George Washington Hospital that the President was shot once in the left side this afternoon as he left the hospital as he left the hotel 
His condition is stable. A decision is now being made whether or not to operate to remove the bullet. The White House and the Vice President are in communication. And the Vice President is now en route to Washington. He is expected to arrive in the city this afternoon. <clears throat> Mrs. Reagan is currently with the President at the hospital. Dan, we, uh, we must tell you that, the, uh, that David Gergen was asked at that briefing a few moments ago whether the Vice President would now act as President. His answer was no. For the time being, Vice President Bush, who is on his way back to Washington, will not be acting as President. The President's condition, as you heard, was described as stable. He was described as conscious. A decision is now being made on whether to operate on that bullet which is lodged in the left side of his chest, apparently. We heard on the Lynn Knopfseger tape, someone asked Knopfseger if the President's heart had been endangered. And Knopfseger appeared to answer no to that question, but that is all we know. For the moment, Vice President Bush, on his way back here, the Secretary of State, Alexander Haig, the Secretary of the Treasury, Donald Reagan, the Secretary of Defense, Caspar Weinberger, and the Attorney General, William French Smith, all here at the White House. And we're awaiting further word. Dan? Bill, I think it's important we keep coming back to uh, the best available information that we have. The best available information that we have is that the President walked into the hospital under his own power, uh, that the President has been conversing uh, with various people while he has been in the hospital, that Lynn Knopfsinger, uh, the ranking White House spokesman who's had anything to say on this uh, subject, has said that while any time you have a gun wound in the area of the chest, you have to consider it serious, uh, that Mr. Knopfsinger's general feeling, uh, general impression was that the President was not uh, badly wounded. This is uh, a new angle of the, uh, of the shooting scene. We've not seen this videotape before. This was taken with another camera. Let's watch. The president has already uh, been hustled into his limousine by this time. And the police are wrestling with the assailant. Now this from another angle. This is the scene immediately after the president's limousine, which was struck by at least two bullets, had pulled away.
This is a suspected assailant being hustled into a police car. What you just saw was a videotape of the uh, shooting scene uh, in the early part of this afternoon, early part of the afternoon, Washington time, outside the Washington Hilton Hotel after uh, an assailant took at least three shots and possibly as many as six. The indication, the latest indication from the Secret Service is that uh, possibly six shots uh, were fired. What you just saw at the end of that videotape, which was a different angle and lasted a bit longer than what we had earlier in the afternoon, was the uh, suspected assailant identified as 22-year-old John Hinckley Jr. of Evergreen, Colorado, uh, being put in a patrol car and uh, taken to Washington. If you were wondering why that uh, Secret Service man was out front and had that uh, automatic weapon at the ready, that was uh, to protect the assailant. Uh, as strange as it may seem, and it may strike some as strange, why would you want to protect the assailant? If you think about it, I think the, uh, the answer is uh, fairly obvious that uh, no one wanted uh, an attack on the assailant and that Secret Service man was protecting him at the time. All of that within minutes after the president had been shot. Uh, now, President Reagan uh, has been wounded uh, by uh, a bullet uh, which is said to have uh, entered from just under his left arm. Uh, it's a chest wound. The president walked into the hospital under his own power uh, and is said to have been uh, conversing with people inside the hospital. Uh, we're told uh, by the White House that a decision is being made now as to whether to operate uh, on President Reagan or not. No further details given. Three other persons injured. Uh, White House Press Secretary Jim Brady. Brady's condition uh, not known and not given uh, out by the hospital as yet. One unidentified White House aide quoted by United Press International as saying in connection with uh, Mr. Brady, quote, it does not look good, unquote. Uh, the Secret Service agent uh, who was injured, Tim McCarthy, is the identification given to us. We have no information on his condition. A Washington policeman is said to have been injured. Uh, his condition is said to be critical. Uh, the identification of that policeman, I repeat for emphasis, is not yet being given out. Uh, right now, Bob Shackney is at George Washington University Hospital in Washington. Uh, Bob, what uh, is new there at the hospital? The information that we have here outside the emergency room was given to us by a variety of White House officials. President Reagan has been shot in the chest. The bullet entered his chest from under his left arm. He is described as being conscious and in stable condition. That's all the information we have. White House spokesman Larry Speak said he could not go beyond that. Uh, he would not say, apparently may not know whether the president will have to undergo surgery. Apparently, when we last heard from Larry Speaks, the bullet was still inside President Reagan's body. Mrs. Reagan arrived here uh, somewhat earlier, looking very worried. The president's car shows signs of bullets striking it. Three cracks along one of the rear windows and a hole that possibly was made by Tell a bullet. Richard. We're told that the president was injured that uh, his press secretary, Jim Brady, suffered a head wound, that a secret serviceman was wounded, and that a policeman was wounded. White House spokesmen say they're trying to uh, set up a more formal press room so that we can be briefed about every half hour on the condition of the president. To repeat, the latest information we have from White House spokesman Larry Speaks is that President Reagan has been shot in the left chest, the bullet entering from under his left arm, that he is conscious, and that he is in stable condition. Robert Chackney, CBS News, outside the emergency room at George Washington Hospital. Thank you very much, Bob Chackney, and we'll be staying in touch with you uh, throughout the afternoon, as we will with Bill Plant, our CBS News correspondent, with whom we've been talking at the White House in our Washington studios, Richard Roth, Judd Duval, and an eyewitness uh, to the shooting, Lim Tucker. Uh, President Reagan at George Washington Hospital, his condition said to be stable. The president uh, has a wound, at least a slight wound, uh, in his chest, Lynn Knopfsinger, a White House aide who has been at the hospital from almost the moment President Reagan arrived, uh, said in something we quoted to you before but come back to, uh, Lynn Knopfsinger says, well, any wound in the chest would have to be considered serious. But Knopfsinger went on to emphasize uh, that the president had walked into the hospital under his own power and had been talking to people uh, inside the hospital. Lim Tucker, who was an eyewitness uh, to the shooting, is in our Washington studios. Lim, the president had gone to the Washington Hilton Hotel uh, to make uh, a speech to a group of uh, labor leaders, had he not? Yes, Dan, and that, that reminds me of something as I left when I had just a moment before I ran to the car. Someone from there asked, well, we'll get back to that. The president's now leaving what's a private entrance uh, for VIPs. The press is just in front of him. There you see, you see that 
the president, uh, well, I saw an eyewitness that the smile sort of left his face, but he was literally pushed into the car, which could explain why no one, eyewitnesses and maybe not the people there in the car, realized at first that the president had been shot. The press at this point, uh, several cameramen, there's Michael Deaver right there in the, just crouching down to the left there, running around the car. Now what you're seeing is the area where just seconds before we had been standing. I was standing about where the officer to the far right now is. There was a barricade, a velvet, a gold velvet rope, which you will see here shortly where the press had been kept. But let me emphasize, this was not what we call a secure press area. In this same area, there were uh, just citizens passing by. There were, they had been there when we went in, some of them. Uh, the crowd swelled during the half an hour or so that the president was in giving his speech. So it was rather large by this time. And they were mixed in, even up to the front ranks, with the press. I believe, Dan, that the shots came from what would have been to my right and maybe just behind me. Uh, there was only one person to my recollection because I had been complaining about not enough room there because there were so many civilians. One person between me and the wall. And we were standing just about now where they have the alleged assailant. Initially, there was just sort of a, a 